today every single person just did what they're enjoy. The whole reality transforms. But why it's the whole other side again in this trap we ha or this layer of duality that it's gotten to, this polarity, the people that are avoiding their truth, as I said, we have to actually look at what is reality. It's not being negative, it's what is true, what we've created, what we've manifested that is dark, also including inside of our own selves. So it's not, if you don't, if you don't look at your shadow part and you think I'm going to focus on my art and just positive, 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 and that's my joy, yes, that temporarily works. It will create, it will lift the frequency because let's say I'm avoiding my shadow. It's still, if I'm keeping myself distracted, I'm creating my art, my art. But the problem is it comes with the huge tidal wave opposite back because everything that you suppressed, it's going to flood out to the surface. So that's why you can't do it in that kind of way. Like by... For, that's the whole Pleiadian lesson when, where they went into light, 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 just light. We don't want to look at the dark. We don't want to look at the dark. It bit, That's really bit them in the ass later. Instead of dealing with it then and there, they suppress it so much that it just like burst out and then it created all the rogue, you know, Pleiadians that went into the worst, you know, that that's how we start creating things darker and darker because they start separating themselves. Because they don't, anything that's dark, it's going to hide itself because whatever is light, it doesn't want to look, if it doesn't want to look at it, if it wants to judge it. So the non-judgment part and like the empathy and, and all of that, it's like really important. And again, it has to be true. You can't make yourself feel it's a process. Everything's a process. So it's like you can't fight the process itself and tell yourself that you should be somewhere where you're not. It's actually just being where you are. Not even, I don't like the word even accepting where I am because that already implies that I have to accept something I'm uncomfortable with. Simply, okay, it is what it is now. Observe both aspects, baby steps, deal with both moving into your joy, but also looking at what is reality. That's the second big part is you have to look at what is reality. What is reality in ourselves, in the outside? What have we created? You know, integrate it. Yeah, so that's the part where it's like it has to be made so clear to, you know, people that discover that, okay, we'll just go towards joy. That means I should never look at anything negative. You know, oh no, Holocaust, I can't look at that. No, this is the reality that has been created. We have to understand why. The question why again, why was that created? Right now, the biggest question we have to ask ourselves is why are their children being trafficked? Not just, oh, this is whose fault is it, pointing fingers and even pointing fingers at our own self. This is my fault, I'm guilty, or this is guilty, or the. No, we have to understand as a collective, how did we create this? Like, that is true wisdom. Again, going back, like, we have to have the whole picture. And the whole picture, it's not the whole picture in the sense of, because the book never ends. Like, the whole picture contains the past, present, future, right? You have access to your future, you have access to your past, therefore you're creating the now based on that, that is the now. But the book itself, it's expanding. So it's, you're never going to have the full, full picture of everything. And that is the mystery of life. That is the, you know, beauty of the unknown. But we can start creating an unknown because it's not the unknown that we fear. It's what we, we project onto the unknown because we've been creating so much from not having our full past and future, the, the wisdom, the knowledge, the stories, the lessons, we've been disconnected from that. So that creates the loop. So yeah, what I'm saying though is that we won't have to fear that unknown because we can have more trust and knowingness of the potentials that we will create. They're not going to be 
again, you know, it comes into the betrayal thing. It's not going to be blindsiding us all the time because we don't realize that we're creating mostly right now at this point from complete unconsciousness, the uncon all the subconscious stuff, all the suppressed things are creating the reality instead of us as a, the being having the, you know, the, the story, the past and the future, all the information, the wisdom, which then confidently it can create from. And then also when we have that, automatically we will know that we are not beings that are meant to be isolated and alone. We will understand the collective and why we, you know, should choose to exist. And I say choose because we do have choice ultimately. And we have chosen. That's why this reality is shifting. We're going into a new reality because the collective, it has chosen. We have learned that enough of the disconnect, the void, the lies, the, you know, we have to know who we are. That's really knowing who we are so we could keep growing who we are instead of spinning the same story over and over again, disconnected from the truth. But the truth, it's going to hold both fear and love. God contains fear and love. God ultimately is choice how it's going to see itself with those aspects how it's going to act, he, she, it, we, all of it's the same thing. We're either a micro piece more divided or more connected. It's all creating together. But God is not just light. Light cannot exist without darkness. It wouldn't know itself. God wouldn't know itself. But what conclusions are we going to make? How are we going to interpret the story? How are we going to share? Because before we, you know, share the bigger story, how are we going to start sharing, understanding each other? We first have to understand that first we have to understand that we are freaking parts of a story. <laughs> like the actors in this book. Now we think we're in some story alone, but when we start sharing with one another, we're going to realize how much we have in common, how much we share the same emotions, positive and negative, through sharing, through communication. That's why fifth dimension that we're moving into is about the throat chakra communicate, community. People have forgotten how to communicate. We've been manipulated, disconnected from that. So that's why it's like, it's so important for us to start sharing our stories. They might seem, oh, not, you know, mundane, or what's the point of this? Or, you know, why are you going to share, you know, your and your story is everything. It's your expression, your dance, your sense of humor, and you don't have to be a perfect dancer. It's not about becoming some celebrity or, you know, doing it the way that the system wants to feed because really it's just a frickin' parasite. It feeds on that type of energy because you start doing it for somebody else instead of from your own joy. But sharing actually who we are in all aspects, that is, that will bring joy because that brings intimacy and also the dark it wants to be seen it wants to be held it wants to be respected not the action that the the you have to give respect to what you know but you understand where that darkness came in you know somebody why they did what they did to be held in non-judgment when you hold somebody in non-judgment you start stepping into observing their reality, understanding how we affect one another, how our realities blend. We are the creators, but we're also the creation. Our creation affects another's creation, which then affects us. 
that's really what karma is. It's understanding is karma. It's not about that there's some, you know, whatever, man on a cloud that decided that we're going to have this punishment reward thing. You know, you do a good deed, then no, it's understanding. Then, you, yeah, do a good deed, get some good back. No, it's not like that. It's simply understanding the laws of the universe, how everything flows, the stars, the planets, everything, it's the same thing. In truth, there's freedom. We cannot hide from the truth or we'll never be free. We'll never be free when we don't look at our neighbor suffering. Our non-interference is also a choice, not helping them. That's also a choice, choosing to look away. It's different when something is truly in our unknown, but when the information, the evidence, it's right before us, that is the choice then, not to look. That is keeping your own self from being free as well as others. True freedom can be attained when we understand wisdom. Again, understand who we are. When we see ourselves in truth, in non-judgment and compassion, we're together, we choose, choose wisely. We will be living the dream. We won't have to dream as much anymore. We won't have to long as much anymore because we will manifest. Our dream will be right before us. That is also the separation that half our life we sleep. We're melding the two the dreamer, the dreamed. Be careful what you dream, the intention that is behind it. Because if you don't understand, again, the story, the truth of this reality, your dreams can also harm. Dream for the all not just for yourself. This cannot be forced. That is a true master. It doesn't have to master anything, for it knows the master is everything. It knows not to harm. And so it is.